Hi everyone, welcome back to Beyond Your Knowledge. So today we are going to be studying immunodeficiency disorders. And before we continue, I would like to share with you Romans 14, 18, sorry, Romans 14, 8 and says, For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or, or die, we are the lords amen hallelujah beautiful word precious word thank you to jesus amen well now we're going to be seeing um the immunodeficiency disorders so we're going to see basically the condition so i'm going to the condition and then the the characteristic f future of the condition okay so in one side we're going to see the condition okay and then on the other side so we are going to see the characteristic features okay now this is basically um some key points here the first one that we are going to see is called um ataxia telangiectasia okay so it takes you telling i mean it's telling yeah telangiectasia so taxi telangiectasia is characterized because has ataxia okay has a uh, telangiectasia tel telangiectasia Okay. Oh yeah. Take a S. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then there we go. So, telangiectasia. Probably you would like to know what it is. So basically, that this is a telangiectasia. It is um a dilation of the capillaries. Okay. So dilation of the capillaries okay and also so basically there is a dilation of the capillaries so it's going to 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 appear as a small red purple clusters so then uh, uh, looks like a small red purple clusters Okay, so like spidery appearance on the skin on the surface of the organ. Okay, so this is the lingiectasia, but what it is ataxia. Ataxia basically it is when there is a lack of muscle con coordination and may affect speech movements. Okay, so ataxia it is a lack of muscle coordination now with that in mind when one thing we say lack of muscle coordination everywhere that we have that we have um muscles so it's going to be affected so your mouth your speech your eye your eye movements so to for swallowing any muscle swallowing is going to be affected so walking is going to be affected picking up all is going to be affected and all their voluntary movement are going to be affected in this patient okay what else we can say about this one this patient also is going to have a sinopulmonary infections. Okay, sinopulmonary infection. Going to be infections. Okay. So now let uh, so don't forget the ataxia telangiectasia with the name. You just can figure out two of those. So what are those two? Ataxia and telangiectasia. Ataxia, remember, lack of the muscle coordination, and telangiectasia is a dilation of the small of the capillaries. And the third characteristic of a Texas telangiectasia is a sinopulmonary infection. Now, let's just enter in another disease. The other disease that we're going to see is called Cheria Higachi syndrome. So, Cheria, okay. And now, um, Higashi, okay, and yeah, syndrome. So what we can say about Cheria Higachi syndrome first so the 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 
the patient. So we're going to see three characteristics of this one. Let's see if we have room for those three. So the first one that we're going to see is oculocutaneous albinism. So oculo, so looks like characteristic of albinism, cutaneous albinism. Okay, then the other characteristic is um, pyogenic infection. So infection with uh, pyogenic, so uh, bacteria, all those things, pyogenic infections, I'm going to be infections. And then the last one, so progressive neurologic dysfunction. So, whoa, progressive, so basically neurologic. this function so if you see it is interesting because this one affects your nervous system affects your immune system i mean because pyogenic infection so any place that the bacteria is going to be is going to be affected also the skin so if you see a patient with infections and in skin and neurologic symptoms so you need to think in cherry higache syndrome Just a quick comment about pyogenic infection. So basically, pyogenic infection, it is an infection that is producing pus. Okay, so and usually there are some more common bacteria. So for example, Staphylococcus. Um, yeah. So let's just write it here. So for example, the most common is going to be Staph. Okay, Strep, Streptococcus. Okay. And yeah, so basically that they cause a superation uh, when they infect the tissue. So those are the most common bacteria, okay, that can cause this. Well, so with that in mind, we can move on. So we still have to see um, a couple more, not a couple more diseases, a few more diseases. So I'm going to open a new slide here. And it, so we're going to continue with the same pattern. We're going to see the condition, okay. So, and then we are going to see on the other side the characteristic features okay um yeah so I, I i i will copy this because probably we will need this for one more here okay so then we, we save some time there okay right okay cool now Next disease. So the next disease that we're going to see is chronic granulomatous disease. Okay, so chronic granulomatous disease. Okay, this chronic granulomatous disease we're going to see a couple characteristics, and one of those is severe bacterial and fungal infections. So the patient is going to have severe bacterial and fungal infection and fungal oh sorry and fungal and there we go infections also if you see the the word says chronic granulomatosis disease so that means that the patient is going to have Grand, there we go. So granuloma formation, okay. Granuloma formation. So if you see a patient with a granuloma formation and the the has severe bacteria and fungal and fungal and fungal infections, we need to think in chronic granulomatous disease. Okay, let's just move on. So the next disease that we're going to be seeing is the George syndrome. The George syndrome, uh, I, um, I, I, uh, yeah, so we have another video of the George syndrome, but yeah, uh, the George syndrome, we are going to mention three characteristics. First, the George syndrome is going to have a congenital, hmm, congenital what? Heart disease, okay? The George syndrome also is going to have a dysmorphic phases, okay? So dysmorphic phases the George syndrome is going to have one more so it's going to have hypocalcemia 
hypocalcemia. So also um, the George syndrome um, affects the T cells, the thymus, all of those. Okay. So um, yeah. So yeah. So also yeah. So the cardiac anomaly. Yeah. The the hepatitis I mentioned the hypocalcemia because for the paratyroid hypoplasia, and yeah. So basically, this is for for the George syndrome and the next one that we are going to see right now. Let's just we have room for probably one more or two more so then the next one is a severe combined immunodeficiency so we saw one that was severe yes oh yeah sorry that was the one that has severe bacterial fungal infection which is chronic and normal disease but now we're going to have one that has the title as a severe combined immuno deficiency okay so it's also known as a skid okay it's pretty common people call us a skid so this one well has a severe bacteria and viral infection in infancy has severe bacterial and viral infection in infancy now it is interesting because the chronic granulomatous disease has a severe bacteria like severe combined immunodeficiency but the difference is that the chronic granulomatous disease has more fungal infections and severe bacteria while the severe combined immunodeficiencies go with severe bacteria and viral infections and it is in infancy well now the, the the patient is going to have chronic diarrhea as well the patient that has a um, um, chronic diarrhea the patient that has severe combined immunodeficiency and then severe combined immunodeficiency also they can get a mucocutaneous candidiasis okay so um, mucocutaneous candidiasis mucocutaneous Yeah, uh, yeah, it should be O U S. Can be yes. There we go. Cool. Also, since we are combining immunodeficiency, it is important that we remember the enzyme that is going to be deficit, and the enzyme is called adenosine deaminase. Okay. So basically, this is a. Uh, also they have um yeah so by uh, this enzyme is adenosine deaminase or also known as a um a ada yeah uh, yeah there we go ada now uh which is this 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 enzyme is necessary for lymphocyte to develop okay so this enzyme is necessary i'm going to to write it here okay necessary um, to develop a lymphocyte there we go and to be lymphocytes yes so now this is not the only disease that we had to study we have two more diseases how many two more just to count one two one two one two one two so okay the next one it is a terminal complement deficiency so wow terminal complement just pay attention to the words because the words tell us what is going to be affected terminal complement deficiency first it is a deficiency as usual but it is in the complement so for this reason this patient is going to have a recurrent Neisseria infection. Okay, so this is for terminal complement deficiency. Okay, 
now we, we we are going to see one more disease here and then the other one that we're going to see so and remember that when we talk about the complement so remember that the complement it is uh um it is the uh, it is involved the mac so and the mac is the membrane okay the the membrane attack complex yeah so it is important version yeah there we go okay now we can go to the next uh no, next is i just wanted to make sure the point because it is very important and then the complement that is a complement cascade c1 c2 and then all those and yeah so and there are some okay this is another lecture but let's just mention the other disease which is Wiscott aldrich syndrome so Wiscott aldrich um, syndrome and we've got Aldrich syndrome so we're going to see recurrent infections so recurrent infections that worsen with age so also even if, if even if we know um, yeah basically every time that worsen with age so quick note in in all those okay so those all those as we mentioned some of those are infancy like skid but it makes things and also that as we grow up so we get older so sometimes our immune system decreased all of those things so we expose more infections but yeah with color syndrome remember recurrent infection because this is the point so you can get re recurrent infections that worsen with age also the patient can get easy bleeding easy there is very important easy bleeding with uh, uh, uh with quadrant syndrome and also they can get eczema eczema okay so and i think that basically this is all about these um immunodeficiencies so thank you so much for watching and remember that we can do all things through christ us and god bless you all